Hey Church, I'm Colleen, and it's an honor to get to share with you today as we continue our Heart of the House series. Today we're talking about worship, and I'm excited to share with you one of my favorite scriptures out of Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. And Paul says this, And so now, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Paul here is urging the church to give themselves to God, not out of religious duty, but from a heart that understands all that God has done for us. You see, we've already given our hearts to God, so it would follow that we would give him our very lives as well, that we return to our creator to know what on earth we were made for. It starts with sacrifice and ends with learning God's will. You see, Jesus changed everything. What he did for us means that it is finished, that we don't have to add anything or earn our way to heaven, but we respond by giving our lives back to him for what he's already given to us. We can do that because we trust and we know that when we give our lives to God, he has the very best in mind for us because we're living in the light of eternity. Our hope, our joy, our life goes beyond the grave. And so we can give our very lives to him knowing that he's already done that for us. And then Paul continues and says, be a living and holy sacrifice. I love this because the idea of a living sacrifice, it kind of goes against the typical language of our day. But for a Christian, living sacrifice means it's an active, ongoing lifestyle of service and surrender for God. It's not legalistic and obligatory. It's not asking, what am I allowed to do or making a checklist? But it's saying, you know what? What honors and glorifies God? What makes us look more like him? We find freedom and life and joy in surrender, in saying, not my will, but yours be done. I remember when I first got saved, I was willing to go the ends of the earth for the Lord, to take risks, to do great things for God. But the longer and further along I got in my journey, the more I realized that God wasn't asking me to do crazy outlandish things, but more to do my ordinary things with a great sacrificial love. You know, maybe I'm willing to go feed orphans in Africa, but am I willing to daily serve and feed my family without grumbling and complaining? I think about last week's serve day, what a great catalyst it was, but hopefully that was a fuel toward the flame of how you translate that to your everyday, that we would serve and sacrifice, that we'd be a living and holy sacrifice for others unto God as an act of worship. What do you think about when you think about worship? You know, maybe it's songs and lyrics, you know, the lights. Those are all great worship, but the ultimate expression of worship is a life that's fully devoted to him. Our act of worship is the way that we live for him every day, the way that we talk, the way that we think, the way that we act towards others, in my marriage, in the way that I parent my kids, in ministry work, in our friendships, in our future, in our finances. How does the way that we live show worship and please God? How does it bring him glory and honor to his name? How is the way that we love God and serve people an act of worship to him? And then Paul continues and he says, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. I love that because this gives a juxtaposition between conform and transform because we have two options. We can be conformed to the ways and customs of this world, which seems kind of passive. We just follow what others are doing. Or we can choose the active route to be transformed by the ways of God. This is a continual action that we become more and more like Jesus as we continue to look towards and follow him. Transformation. That's such a hard thought because the kingdom mentality is opposite of the way in the world that we see. And so that is why we have to start by changing the way we think. I think about Philippians 4.8 that says that we think upon things that are lovely and pure, of good rapport. We have to change the way that we think. And Paul's talking about being transformed in our own hearts and in our own lives, in the way that we live. Sometimes as believers, we can want to transform everyone else around us. We can want to transform our circumstances or, hey, that word is great for that person. But God wants to transform us. Start with the plank in our own eye before we look for the specks in others. So how do we do this transformation? Well, it's nothing that we do. It's what the Holy Spirit does in us. So how do we know we're being transformed? Well, do we start to look different? Do we start following a different path? 
Do we follow the Lord's leading instead of what others are doing? Do we have fruits of the Holy Spirit active and alive in our lives? Love, do we have more joy and more peace? Are we more patient? Are we growing ever more kind and gentle with others? And then, do we build God's kingdom by using our spiritual gifts? You know, God has uniquely gifted you with a purpose and a plan for your life. And so are you using those gifts to encourage others, to maybe lead, to maybe speak life into someone else or pray for others? Are you building God's kingdom because you're being transformed in the way that you live and in the way that you think? And then finally, he says, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You see, finding God's will isn't a formula. If I do this, then this will happen. But as you continue to walk forward in transformation, you will start to learn to know God's will for your life. But if you copy the behaviors of the world and just follow what everyone else is doing, you'll have a much harder time. This is the gospel message, that surrender, that transformation and the moving forward, the death, the tomb, the resurrection. This is what Christ did for us. And so this is how we respond to him, by being a living and holy sacrifice, by living a life of worship, by being transformed by God and surrendering our lives to him. And then we will learn to know God's will for our lives. So what's the application? What are the questions for today? First, are you living for yourself or God? Are you a holy and living sacrifice? Are the choices that you're making about you or is it a living sacrifice unto God? And then transformation. Are you following the ways of the world and culture, your own desires, or are you allowing God to transform you by changing the way you think, by changing the way you see and live? And then finally, are you on the journey towards learning to know God's will for you? As you surrender, as you allow God to transform you, you will start to learn to know God's will for your life. And what an exciting journey that is, that a life of surrender, it honors and pleases him, and it helps us look more like Jesus. Let's do that today, church. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you today for your word. Thank you for Romans 12. God, that we are living and holy sacrifices, that this is our act of worship that's acceptable to you. God, that we don't conform to the world, that we don't follow the way of the world, but God, we, we allow ourselves to be transformed by allowing you to change the way that we think, by the way that we see God, what you're doing in our lives. And then as we do that, as we surrender and as we allow the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, that we will learn to know your will for us. God, that pleasing, that good, that perfect will. God, we want to follow in your footsteps. We want to follow the life of surrender. Lord, you've given us everything. Jesus, by your death and resurrection, God, we have eternal life. And so we give our life back to you today. We say, have your way. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We love you, we trust you, and we give you all the glory. It's in the name of our Savior, in Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day, church. 